Hello guys, hope you're doing well. Thanks for watching my lectures. Today I'm going to talk about one of the earliest equations in fluid mechanics which helped us to find an algebraic equation in the framework of continuum mechanics to describe the motion of a fluid, which is called the Bernoulli's equation. Around, I think, uh, two centuries ago, the Bernoulli presented this uh, celebrated equation. The Bernoulli's equation uh, has many assumptions, different assumptions, and the procedure of derivation of this important equation is very important. Uh, if you want to correctly use this equation in correct situations, you have to be aware of assumptions behind this equation and the procedure of derivation of different forms of this equation. Okay, so let's start from the first equation or the first version of the Bernoulli's equation which can be used for irrotational flows. The irrotationality is related to the vorticity vector. When I say the flow is irrotational, it means that the curl of velocity or the vorticity vector is zero, uh, or the velocity field is curl free. And also the flow is compressible, but the flow can be viscous. It's important to be uh, aware that the Bernoulli's equation can be written for viscous flows when the flow is irrotational and incompressible. Uh, and also, uh, in addition to uh, the assumption of viscose, generally viscose, having a viscose flow, the viscosity, the dynamic viscosity, uh, should be constant. So, this version of the Bernoulli's equation is written for generally viscose flow with constant viscosity and incompressible and irrotational flow. Also, you say that the Bernoulli's equation can be written between two points located on a specific streamline. This version of the Bernoulli's equation can be written between any two uh, arbitrary points in, a, in the flow field. So, we don't have that assumption between two points on a streamline here. And you can write the Bernoulli's equation between any uh, point, you, any points, two points you want. Okay, this, let's start from the navier stokes equation. Uh, now, uh, you see that this term here is the viscose term, so I have included the viscose term in the navier stokes equation. It's, uh, so, the flow is viscose. The, this one is the local derivative or local acceleration. This one is the nonlinear term or the advection term. Uh, the pressure term, the viscose term, and the gravity force or the volumetric source term. I want to use two important identities, vector identities here. The first one is related to the nonlinear term here. You see that I have written the nonlinear term as a sum of two terms. The first one is the gradient of the square velocity over two. And the second one is the lamb vector. This is called the lamb vector, which is the cross product of the velocity and the vorticity. And the vorticity is the curl of the velocity field. And the Laplacian term, which uh, is the viscose term for incompressible and constant viscosity flows. The Laplacian term, again, can be written as uh, the sum of two uh, terms. The first one is gradient of the divergence of the velocity, which is zero because the flow is incompressible and the divergence of the velocity field is zero. And the second one is uh, the curl of uh, the vorticity vector, and the vorticity vector itself is the curl of the velocity. So this one is the curl of the curl of the velocity field. Substitute these two uh, identities into the navier stokes equation. Uh, the Laplace uh, term is uh, converted into this one, which uh, is written here in the right-hand side. We have uh, viscosity here. And the nonlinear term is written as a sum of two terms. Keep the first one in the left hand side, and the second one 
is written here in the right hand side. Don't ignore the density here. Uh, this is the lambda vector, as you see. Uh, also, we have uh, three terms this one, the pressure force, and the gravity force, which uh, all of them can be written as gradient of something. For example, the gradient of pressure, gradient of the, I don't want to call it kinetic energy, but something similar to the kinetic energy, and gradient of the z coordinates. So, combine these the three. Uh, this one, this one, and this one. Combine these three terms which are similar to each other because all of them uh, can be written as a gra gradient of something. Uh, in the first, uh, and write them in the first uh, side of the equation. This is the uh, local derivative or local acceleration. Uh, and the second part, the second side of the equation, include the vorticity vector, as you see. This is the lamp vector, and this one comes from the, the second identity. So then, now is the time to impose our main assumption, which is the rotationality of the flow field. So it means that the vorticity vector is a zero. So the th both terms in the second uh, side of the equation are zero because they uh, both of them include vorticity. Uh, so only we have the first side of the equation, which is written here, but uh, consider that in your rotational flows, we can write the velocity vector as gradient of a scalar field, which is called the potential function. Okay, so substitute the velocity vector here by the gradient of uh, the potential function, you see that the order of derivation with respect to time and the gradient operator can be interchanged because and, uh, the flow field is continuous and the uh, continuum mechanics principle holds. Okay, then we have the partial derivative of gradient of phi or the gradient of potential function and gradient of these terms. Then integrate um, this equation between any two points, for example, then you can easily eliminate the del operator or the gradient operator and write the, this term by the partial derivative of the phi function and sum of the pressure. This is something similar to the kinetic energy, but originally it is the uh, inertia term in the nonlinear uh, advection term. And this is the, uh, the gravity force. And the zero in the right-hand side of the previous equation changes to a constant because you have integrated the equation. This constant generally is a function of time because the flow is unsteady. This form of the Bernoulli's equation is the unsteady uh, Bernoulli's equation for irrotational, incompressible, but viscose, constant viscosity flow flows which can be written between any arbitrary pair of points in the flow field. Please consider in this uh, version of the Bernoulli equation that the flow should be irrotational or potential and uh, viscose. We have uh, a kind of uh, fluid flow which is called the viscose potential flow. This is a keyword you can Google it and find other details about the viscose or viscose potential flows or viscose irrotational flows. So if someone asks you about the validity of the Bernoulli's equation for in for viscose flows, the answer is yes. The Bernoulli's equation can be written for a viscose but irrotational and incompressible flows between any uh, arbitrary pair of points.